I wonder if you read your local newspaper. And if you do, I wonder if you think it's any good. Do you know who owns it? In 2019, I helped start a local newspaper here on the tip of Outer Cape Cod. Our small group believes that ownership really matters. The whole thing started innocently enough. We were readers and writers who felt that our community wasn't well reflected in the newspaper we were reading. This is a really special place. We're surrounded by incredible nature. It's a place that draws thinkers and scientists and artists. We weren't seeing enough of that. It was as if our newspaper was shrinking away, getting slimmer and slimmer. It was dying. In 2018, Penny Abernathy, a researcher at the University of North Carolina, published research showing that 20% of local newspapers across the country had closed over the last 15 years. If we were gonna do something about this, we needed to understand why that was happening. The first reason we heard as we read and talked to people was the internet did it. Well, the internet changed our relationship to information. But what's less talked about is that the, the internet changed the relationship between advertising and newspapers. Newspapers have traditionally been dependent primarily on advertising for revenues, much more than readership. Well, that's true, and that's a real problem. But we wondered, how much could that really matter when it came to local newspapers? Because doesn't your, your local haircut person and your car repair guy and your local gallerist want to reach you right where you are? So that couldn't be, that couldn't be the whole story. Next we heard, it's just a terrible business to be in. You can't make any money running a newspaper. You'd have to be crazy to start a newspaper. Well, that newspapers used to be extremely profitable. They were 20 or 25% uh, on margins. But, and so that has changed. The industry average right now across the United States is 12%. And we thought, that doesn't seem that bad. What do other small businesses make in profits? The, the average small business profitability across America is around 7%. So 12% is a good thing. That didn't explain everything. Third, we heard people just don't care. People don't care about local news. That didn't sit well because I care and my friends cared and when I talked to people in this community, they cared. So it didn't make, didn't make sense. Who says people don't care about local news? Recently, Dan Kennedy, who teaches journalism at Northeastern University in Boston, reported that he was reporting on the closure of a large number of newspapers in New England. And he had received some internal documents from journalists who worked at some of those papers that revealed that it was the executives, it was the owners of the newspapers that were closing who told those who were losing their jobs. The reason the news these newspapers are closing, the reason we're consolidating them all, is that people don't care about local news. So who are those owners? More and more, those owners are big companies. Forbes reported last year that the top 10 news companies own 50% of America's dailies. And in February, The Economist reported that 25% of America's newspapers are owned by private equity firms. In 2018, we had already been reading these trends in the American Prospect where we came to understand the problem with that setup. 
The problem is those consolidations have been made on the idea of a high level of profitability, profitability that is not possible anymore. So the only way these large companies can still be profitable is to say goodbye to journalists, sell off assets, close newspapers, and make some money managing their own bankruptcies. You might think, well, that's just the way it is. This is, this is the economy. This is private, private business. People have to do what they have to do. People are allowed to make money. They have to do, they have to do it the way they think they need to do it. We can't do anything about this. Well, I think it's important that we start to think of newspapers as something different from other kinds of businesses. Newspapers are different from toy stores, which have also been bought by private equity firms. <clears throat> but newspapers are essential to democracy. Community newspapers are a place where people are able to see across the divide, where we are able to get informed to solve problems. There are places where we practice seeking the truth and believing that it's possible to find the truth, even if we make mistakes. So if newspapers are essential to democracy and they're being closed the way they are, then the loss of newspapers is, is related to the loss of our democracy. We think we can do something about this. Our business plan was set our sights on having 7,500 subscribers within five years in order to become sustainable. We're in our third year, and we just hit the 5,000 mark. We don't know if it's going to work. It's an experiment still, and some things are hard. We raised half the capital we thought we would need to get to year five, and we figured we'd raise the rest once we were real and we could convince investors that there was, we had something going. But it turns out to be hard to run a fundraising campaign while running a newspaper. Um, we also are finding that we would like to add more experienced people to our staff some people who really know the news business, some, some more senior journalists. And that is hard because as newspapers have closed, many people have left this field. They're writing for advertising companies, they have substacks, they do other things. This is not a really well-paid profession. We'd like to revisit our business plan and raise salaries a little bit. We didn't plan for the kind of housing crisis that we're in the middle of right now here on the Outer Cape. So there are things that we still have to overcome, but we're, we're optimistic that we can. We're gonna try a few things that we think will help. One is to set really modest profit goals. Um, we talk to other local newspaper owners. There are many still all across the country. Um, Bill Huff, who is the publisher of the Falmouth Enterprise at the other end of the Cape, said, oh yeah, people ask me, how do I navigate this media industry landscape? And my answer begins with, I'm not part of the media industry. What he's saying is, I'm a small business. I run a newspaper. So setting modest profits, we're hoping someday, maybe 8%. He told us when he brings in an 8% profit, he knows he needs to reinvest, hire somebody new, improve something. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing we're doing is looking to reduce our dependence on advertising. We've had really good success with small business people in our community, um, but we're not anywhere near the 80% revenues from advertising that's normal for this industry. So what if we could someday make it to 50%? That's our thinking. And we're doing some creative things to bring in money in other ways. We're gonna to have to lean on the community more. 
Maybe we have to charge more than $1.50 next year for the paper. That could happen. Um, we also have started a nonprofit organization, and some of what we do, like bringing aspiring writers in as fellows to learn with us, can be supported by philanthropy. They leave us, but at least they come and learn with us, and maybe that helps the whole field. So we think it can be done, and we think there's evidence that it's worth doing. I hope that you think your community's stories are worth telling. And I hope that you know that there is a relationship between your community newspaper and democracy. And I hope that if your local paper, if there is one, isn't truly local, that you'll join in and start a takeover. Thank you.